Hello, everyone. I'm Michael Saltzman, the Director of Digital Products at Blue Sky Bio. As usual, I'd like to welcome everybody who's joining us for today's webinar presentation. We are continuing the 2022 webinar series. Information and schedule regarding the upcoming webinar presentations can be seen at blueskyplan.com forward slash webinars 2022. Via that link, you can also access past recordings. So if you've missed any of the previous presentations, please go ahead and check out the recordings via the website. Again, blueskyplan.com webinars 2022. And you can see the upcoming schedule. Register for upcoming webinar presentations. All of them are available at no charge and will be issuing one CE credit. A few technical items before we get started. If you have questions during the webinar presentation, please enter them into the QA chat box and they'll be addressed during the presentation. We'll be sending the CE credit via email, usually within a week or a week and a half or so after the webinar presentation. The recording of this presentation should also be available during the web, um, via the website. So if you missed part of the presentation or if you'd like to share it, then that could be seen via our YouTube channel and our websites. Today, we have the pleasure of hearing from Dr. Brian Correa. Dr. Correa worked in private practice in Nevada, Utah, and Oklahoma, where he gained a vast, a vast amount of experience and a passion for digital dentistry. Now, Dr. Correa is part of the Transcend Dental Education team. The Transcend team has a unique and fa fantastic approach of providing advanced training in dentistry while providing low to no cost care to the underserved. If you're looking for additional education opportunities, especially face-to-face -face training, check out transcend.com. Today, we have the pleasure of hearing Dr. Correa speak on the topic of crown and bridge workflows with Blue Sky Plan. Brian? Thank you so much, Michael. I'm excited to be here tonight and uh, hope that we'll get a lot out of this. Um, like Michael mentioned, I've been using Blue Sky Plan for, uh, or been, been in digital dentistry for a number of years now, and I've really enjoyed uh, adding this to my practice and find that it, it's created something new for me to be engaged in. Uh, as Michael touched on, um, I'm part of, I'm a partner with the Transcend Dental Group here in, in Huntsville, Alabama. And there's kind of three prongs to what we do. Um, we have a digital lab that we make full art surgical guides. Um, we have just added dentures and all next type restorations as well. We have the education center that is primarily focused on digital dentistry, and we're working towards offering live patient courses uh, for doctors to come out of state to come and, and train as well. And then finally, we have the clinic where we treat, like M Michael mentioned, underserved patient population and try to utilize the technology and uh, advances within the digital area of dentistry to, to create high quality restorations at a very low cost for our patients. So we started that last year and it's just been growing and moving forward as, as, we, as we go. Tonight, I wanna to focus on a couple different areas within digital dentistry and also uh, within Blue Sky Plan as well. Um, for those who may be new to digital, digital dentistry, I wanna talk about some of the, the main um, pieces of equipment that you need to be able to get into this space and then um, how you can utilize Blue Sky Plan to further your digital uh, workflows and the uh, utilization within your practice. Um, I think that initially it can be intimidating as far as how to get into digital dentistry, but um, Blue Sky Plan provides a really low barrier uh, with, their, with their low to no cost options um, to be able to utilize that software. Uh, as far as equipment goes, we'll get into some of that and then how you can create restorations and either uh, mill them or print them in your own office. So as, as I think about digital dentistry, there's a certain workflow and really within all dentistry, uh, there's you know the, the preparation of, of the tooth or whatever it may be, and then an acquisition, acquisition of data. And what you do with that data then, um, you can either send it to a lab or you can utilize that within your, within your own space to be able to create and design a restoration, then you, then you can go and fabricate. So this is just kind of a broad overview of what we're gonna be working with tonight. And hopefully what you can, utilize within your own offices um, and practices. Personally, I, I started uh, with my own kind of digital journey, I suppose, with CEREC. 
Um, I think as a lot of people probably do, it's really well known. It's, it's, it's out there. Um, as I learned more and more about these systems, I found that there were open systems that would allow me to use maybe a different scanner. For example, uh, I have pictured a Medit 700 here, um, or use a little different software uh, to build a design like Blue Sky, Blue, Blue Sky Plan um, or some of the other design software out there. And then um, instead of just milling a restoration, be able to, to utilize that to print or um, use other type of open system mills to be able to create the, uh, the restorations that, that we want to be able to provide to patients. And I found that as I did that, I had a lot more opportunities and a lot different um, restorations that I can make other than just a single unit crown or even a surgical guide uh, through the CEREC system. So I found that to be rewarding and enjoyable uh, to be able to jump into. So as far as like the minimum equipment that you're gonna want getting into digital, digital dentistry, if you're not already uh, adopting these types of workflows, the first place I would recommend is to start with the camera. It doesn't have to be something fancy. It doesn't have to be uh, something with an external flash even. And heck, even if you wanna use your phone, um, that'll work just fine initially. Um, the, I have this camera that's pictured here on the, uh, the screen. It can be purchased at blueskybio.com. Um, it's one that has a built-in flash and, and a, you know, nothing fancy as far as the zoom goes, but it does a job. It'll take a photo of, of something that I want to be able to communicate to my patient. And, um, you know, other than just trying to document my work and post it onto Instagram or, or on uh, Facebook or whatever it may be, um, it's a really important communication tool for our patients. Uh, if you can take a photo of their smile and and review that with them, say you have a screen that you can pull up a photo with them in your office, uh, you can go through and, and look at things and, and they may tell you what they don't like about their smile or that, uh, they, that they would, they've always wanted to change. And it can lead towards a, a greater satisfaction for patient care, uh, as well as, you know, creating more interesting work for you to be able to do as, as well as a dentist. So that's the very first place that I would recommend starting. Um, the next step to that, I think I would probably recommend getting an intraoral scanner. Um, and what you see down here in the lower right corner of this screen is what's called an STL. And if you're if you're new to digital dentistry again, an STL is essentially just uh, a bunch of these little triangles. You can kind of see on the screen there. This this scan has been broken into or shown the the, the triangles that make up this 3D image um, or this 3D object within the computer. So a scanner goes in and takes thousands of little pictures or there are a couple of different ways that it can gather the information, but then it reconstructs this model that then you can go and do whatever you want with. A lot of times I'll start with taking a scan of the patient's mouth before I've even done any type of uh, preparation at all. And I can utilize that information or that model to create um, a wax up or um, you know maybe even print out 3D models if I want to, uh, whatever it may be to be able to communicate with the patient so that we can be on the same page moving forward. I found that if uh, my patient understands what I'm trying to communicate better, they're a lot more eager to uh, be um, compliant with the, the type of treatment planning that we provide and um, be on board. So uh, again, just helping to, to inform and educate our patients is a huge thing that, that really is greatly enhanced by using intraoral scanning technology. From there, the next step that I would probably recommend is, is getting a 3D printer. Um, the, the technology here is just improving almost on a six month basis or even quicker. Um, it seems like there are constantly new resins that are coming out that are improving what we can do with these restorations. Um, as you can see on the left side of the screen here, this is a wax up that I painted or uh, printed for a patient. Um, I had taken a scan of their mouth and then done an overlay of a wax up for them and uh, printed those models so that I could, I could present that to the patient and show them uh, what the work was that we were gonna be doing in their case. And then also allowed me to be able to transfer that to a putty index that I could then mock up in their mouth. So um, when you're doing something more than just a single unit crown, uh, that's, that's a really useful workflow. Uh, also, you can do printing of aligners. If you're doing ortho, ortho uh, you can do dentures, I mean, the crowns. I mean, the, the, there are just so many different options. Surgical guides that, that you can you can get into with printing, and like I said, the resins are improving at such a rate that it really is creating so many more opportunities to be able to provide uh, better, high quality restorations for our patients, and also decrease the cost associated with the lab bills that, that we have to take on. So, um, 
pictured here is a desktop health and vision one and a uh, sprint ray pro s um, both really great printers we have both of them we use them all the time and we really uh, really like what they have to offer um, different companies sometimes will have different printing uh, or different resins that, that you can print with um, so that's something to look into if you're deciding to uh, purchase one of these for your office a really good printer you can get for around seven thousand uh, dollars and it kind of goes up from there but that's kind of the entry point and um, it, it Again, it opens doors for you and your patients. The next step of, of the kind of digital equipment workflow that I would, I would suggest getting into is a mill. And this really allows for a lot of cost savings in your office. As you can see pictured on the right-hand side of the screen, that's what the zirconia uh, restorations look like when you mill them out, out of a puck. Um, many may be familiar with the, the, the blocks that you use with CEREC. Uh, the pucks are a lot more cost efficient. As you can see, you can mill out almost a dozen or more restorations in one puck, and a puck will range from about $100 to $120 per puck. So, um, you know, your, your cost for creating that restoration decreases significantly. And after you've paid for your, your, your mill and you've paid for an employee to, to be able to work that, you really can get these restorations down into about the $25 range um, or less, depending on, on what you're making. So, this mill that's pictured here is the Versamil 5X400. We have one of these in our, in our clinic here, and it can do everything but mill a titanium bar. So even a custom abutment is something that it, it is capable of doing. Um, Emacs, uh, Zirconia, PMMA. Um, so you have a lot of really good options with it. I think this, this mill is actually sold by Blue Sky Bio, and I think it retails somewhere around $39,000. So, um, you know, building your, your equipment, a little bit by little bit it doesn't all have to be done at once, um, but it it really adds a whole other dimension into your practice and what you can offer to your patients. This is uh, it's called a centering oven. After you you uh, get this zirconia milled out in the puck form, you uh, you separate those little connectors and then you would have to uh, center it in an oven like this. Um, and again, this is another, another cost. But even if you were to get all of these things minus the printer, if you got an a uh, scanner, a uh, mill, and an oven, and then the software, you're looking somewhere in the neighborhood of $65,000, $75,000, which um, compared to some of the other closed systems out there, it's a really affordable option if you consider that you could, you could be saving um, close to $100 per crown unit if you were sending that to one of the bigger labs here in the nation. So uh, again, a lot of really good cost savings that are, that are um, available to you through implementing these workflows in your office. So again, just to, at the baseline level, what, what do you want to get started? I recommend camera, um, a scanner, possibly a printer, and then Blue Sky Plan, again, they, they have such low cost options to be able to utilize their, their software. Um, the most of it's free. If you're gonna export some things out of it, you will be charged for those. Um, you can look in more into that, but uh, Blue Sky Plan does offer a really great option uh, as far as that goes. And if I could just jump in for a second. That yeah. exports from the Crown and Bridge module, both to an STL file and to a mill, are completely free. So you right. can get started with Crown and Bridge from Blue Sky Plan without you know paying anything. Um, and just another comment regarding uh, the manufacturing of the parts: if you're getting started gradually with designing, let's say, you could always use the Lab Pronto option for the manufacturing. So you could definitely do things gradually and graduate through the levels, as uh, Brian's pointing out. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, I, and I'll get into, and Michael, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, you can also design dentures and they're a half uh, an export per jaw. Is that correct? Yeah, the upper and lower together is one export. Yeah. One, one export. And then if you're if you're going to export a uh, surgical guide, I think I may talk about that in one of the videos that I have here, but just wanted to highlight that. Um, if you're aligning models or using some, some of the other utilization or tools within Blue Sky Plan, um, those are free as well. So um, that is, just like Mike pointed out, a, a great option to ease your way into digital dentistry and something that pays a lot of dividends. And, and beyond that, one of, the, one of the reasons why I really just like digital dentistry is just fun. I, just, I think that there's so many really cool things happening within this uh, kind of realm within dentistry right now that it's really exciting to be a part of that and to see uh, the things that are changing again on such a quick basis. So um, that's really where I guess I, I found a passion for this and uh, I really enjoy being able to utilize that and then bring that to my patient. And uh, I'll show a case a little bit later. Um, it actually wasn't designed on Blue Sky Plan, but it, it is a digital workflow that 
um, you easily could do within Blue Sky Plan as well. So, so this is, uh, I'm just gonna show a, a video here on just kind of general navigation within Blue Sky Plan. When I first started using Blue Sky Plan, I was a little bit lost as far as has so much depth to it. And it's such a powerful software that uh, I had trouble kind of knowing how to even orient myself. So I'll touch on a couple of things that are helpful to kind of get just as you're starting out using this, if you're, if you're new to it, if you're not to it, if you're not new to it, maybe you'll find something out that, that you didn't realize if you've been using it for years as well. And if uh, there is video or uh, sound to this, so if there, if, if it's not showing up, please just let me know and I can narrate if needed. So the first thing I want to show within Blue Sky Plan is just how to navigate within the software. When I first started using this, I felt like I it was so new to me that I didn't really know where to click or even what what uh, clicks did what within the software. So I thought it would be helpful to, to give a little tutorial on that. So the first thing that we want to do is import uh, Combeam CT into the, into the software. And you can do this by actually just uh, clicking and dragging in a zipped file. So a lot of times those cone beam files are really big. And so Blue Sky Plan allows you to just bring in the zipped file and it'll open it and allow you to import the cone beam without having to go into unzipping the file and, and decompressing that data. So when you bring it in, um, you'll be able to define what window you want to look at within that cone beam information. I'm not going to make any changes here. But if you do, it sometimes cuts down on the amount that it needs to process. And so your computer may work, uh, the, the system may work a little bit quicker um, if, you, if you reduce that window. So instead of seeing back here in the vertebrae or, or whatever, I could cut that out. And um, sometimes the software runs a little bit faster when you do that. So the first thing that I'm going to just go through here is just the mouse clicks and what they do. Uh, the left click will allow you to rotate that data that you have pulled up on your screen. The right click button will allow you to scroll in and out as you move your mouse forward and backward. And then if you click and hold the scroll button itself, it'll allow you to translate whatever object you have on the screen. You can do the same thing by holding left and right buttons at the same time and moving the, the object back and forth. So that, those are the, the mouse clicks. Um, basically, no matter what function you're doing in, in Blue Sky Plan, it's gonna allow you to do the, the same clicks will do the same movements. The next thing that I found to be really helpful and, and really helped me understand how to navigate better within Blue Sky Plan is if you look up here on the top right corner where it says model editing. This is uh, a window that allows you to click, click and select different modules within Blue Sky Plan. And each module has a few different functionalities that will change depending on what you're trying to do. So if I'm trying to make a, if I'm trying to import a model and really just try to get oriented, I'm gonna use the model editing software I can bring in some STLs, and I'll show that in just a minute here as we design a crown and a bridge um, because it'll have me orient those models that I, as I bring them into the software. Um, within, if I just wanted to look at the cone beam, I could, I could click on viewing, uh, the viewing option or viewing module. And it, as you can see, just by selecting back and forth between these two modules, I have different tools available to me um, to use. In the normal module, this is oftentimes what you'll use for implant planning. Um, although it does limit some of the options that you have available to you as far as customizing. Certain implant sizes um, or, or different uh, functionality within the implant list. So I'll go and click on the advanced module. And if I were to drop an implant in here, as I select back and forth between the normal module and the advanced, you can see it gives me some different options as far as um, making some additional customization if I wanted to. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of that implant because we don't really need it for our purposes here right now. But just wanted to show again that there are different options as you click through these different modules. If I wanted to go to the crown and bridge module, again, I don't really need comb beam data for that, so it'll get rid of that comb beam data. Um, but I could import STLs here as well. In the denture module, um, I also have some functionality. So as, as we are primarily going to be use, utilizing this crown and bridge module today, we'll show some of the options that are specific to that module um, and that we'll be utilizing. The other thing that you can do is, 
is customize the toolbars that you want to be able to use if you're in the different modules. Um, for example, you may not need measurements or you may not be able to need to see different um, surfaces if you're in a different module. So just by right clicking on the toolbar up there, you can go to toolbars and then select whatever you would like to have. Um, so I, I try to customize that so my workspace is a little bit more clean and not as cluttered and it allows me to see what I need to see. One other thing that's really helpful if I'm in this model editing or really we'll go to advanced if I'm doing implant planning. One of the things that's really helpful is if I look at, at just what uh, parts of the, the comb beam are available for me to view right now, I really only have this 3D image. Uh, if I wanted other uh, views, I can go to I can go to view and then perspectives, and then I primarily like this implant tangential three option if I'm doing implant guide planning, uh, surgical guide planning. It it just gives me some more data and cross sectional views of whatever it is that I'm trying to look at. So uh, again, that's tool, view perspectives, and you have a few different options here that you can choose from, um, and utilize different image points for your comb beam data. The last thing that um, is helpful to understand is that a lot of the functionality contained within these modules is had over here on this right side of the screen in the panels. And I can go and X out on these panels and it'll close them on this right side. Sometimes there are things that you that you don't know where they went or the, the functionality, maybe, maybe your screen pulls up something like this and you're trying to figure out how to go about uh, you know, creating a surgical guide or whatever it may be um, if, you're, if you're not using the, the guide wizard. If you go up here to the panel setting, you can click on, for example, your, your nerve list or um, if you want your implant list or surfaces panel. So that's how you go and add back panels that you might need to be able to navigate within this software and within uh, you know, particularly implant planning or whether it, it depending on whatever module you're using. So uh, don't forget that if you if something's not um, showing up the way that you want it to, it may be Brian, did you freeze? Did we lose Brian? No, oh, it looks like we lost Brian Korea. Let's give him a minute to uh, to join us again, hopefully. In, but uh, I'll just kind of skip past that. So, um, okay, so now if we're, hopefully I have everybody back here. I apologize again if, if, uh, if you're just reconnecting or if, I, if, if uh, you stepped out for just a second while that rebooted. Um, I'm just gonna show a quick uh, video of, of what it looks like to scan. Um, this is a prep that I just did on a model here, um, just for demonstration purposes. Again, this is with the uh, iMetro or the, the Medit software. Um, this is a pretty good scanner. Again, most of the scanners that are coming out right now do a great job um, and have a lot of functionality within their individual software as well. So most people are probably familiar with what an intral scan looks like. So uh, I don't want to take too much time with this. But um, one thing that I do want to point out and something that I did not realize when I, you know, for a number of years with, with utilizing intral scanning technology is the pattern that you scan actually makes a big difference. Um, if you consider the fact that your scanner is taking just thousands of different photos and stitching those together um, in some instances, or, or there's some other ways that, that goes about and, and it's created, but um, as it meshes all of these images together and creates this 3D image, um, if you don't get the right orientation in your data, it can create uh, what, I, what I like to think of as like railroad tracks going in the, 
in, in, in kind of a, a slope direction. So it may look like it's straight, but it could be in a different plane than you realize. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, like it's shown up on the top left of that screen, it's showing, uh, it's giving you indication as to the best way that uh, you can scan for um, that individual software, that individual scanner. Medit does tend to um, instruct as, as far as the best way that it recommends for its technology. I think that uh, there, there are instructions for Prime Scan or, or all the other scanners that are out there as well. But just make sure that um, usually kind of the best approach is to scan along the occlusal surface, kind of do a rocking motion on the anterior portion, and then come back, get lingual, and then buckle um, and, and capture any data that you need other than that. So just a quick uh, overview of, of what that looks like. So I'm going to go into the, the crown planning section of uh, the Blue Sky Plan software now. Um, we'll just do a single unit crown on, on the lower left side and just kind of go through some of the, the, the tools and functions. If you have questions, um, I'm trying to stay up on this as well. Um, and I will, uh, I'll probably answer most of those questions just at the end because I don't want to interrupt the video because it's hard to start and stop. So um, we'll go ahead and just click on the next video, hopefully, here. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do here in Blue Sky Plan is create a crown. So we'll click on, click on this crown module here, that'll select a crown module, and we can tell the software that we either wanna make a conventional crown, a crown for titanium base or bridge. This time we're just gonna do a conventional crown. It'll ask me to load the files that I wanna use. I like to select here on this network option that allows me to open up my Windows file browser that is a little bit easier for me to find what I'm looking for. So I'll go in here into my single crown number 19, and I'm gonna select both of these uh, files at once. I'm gonna have the lower jaw, which I'm going to use to create my crown, and then I wanna have an antagonist that I can mark my contacts and uh, have the entire mouth in, uh, in my in Blue Sky Planet once. So I'll go ahead and click the lower file and then hold control and select the upper file, open those, and those will directly import into Blue Sky Planet. <clears throat> the next window that it's gonna bring up is my orientation file. It's gonna ask me how I want to uh, tell the software which files I'm actually using. So it's gonna give me the option to orient these files And what it's asking me is, okay, you have which are you going to which jaw are you going to be using or marking as your upper file? So I'm going to have my antagonist upper, my maxilla, and I'm going to use a dentate file. If you're only scanning like a quadrant, you can do a partial file, and that'll help you just bring in what information you need and orient it correctly. But for me, I'm going to be using a dentate file, so we'll keep that selected there. We'll continue to alignment, and then now I'm just going to select three points on this model that will allow me to uh, orient it correctly within the software. In order to provide some functionality or, or perform certain functions in Blue Sky Plan, you have to be able to, you have to hold down the shift button and then left click. So to drop these little balls here, that's what I have to do. And for most of the functions here in this Crown and Bridge module, you'll be using the shift button to be able to enable those functions. So it lines, uh, based on those little spheres that I dropped onto the model, it'll line that model up. <clears throat> and I can look at it from multiple different angles to verify that I like that uh, orientation or setting. And I'll go ahead and continue it. I like where that's at, so I'm not going to change anything. But if, if it was off, you could make those adjustments based on those coordinates there. And now I have my mo models oriented into Blue Sky Plan. So the first thing that I'm going to do now that I have my models uh, integrated is I'm going to drop in a model tooth to my tooth number 19 here uh, to get essentially the sizing for the crown that I'm going to be using correct. So first thing I'm going to do is go to surfaces panel here on the right side and I'm going to hide my upper model so I'm just seeing this lower uh, this lower jaw, lower arch. I'll go up here on my tool toolbar and go ahead and add a tooth. Up here in this add tooth category or function, you have a number of different tooth libraries that you can choose from. Um, I like Mitch Hurst's this uh, flat anatomy library for this particular case. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and import into my model. So 
Now, I didn't want to put it there, but um, wherever you click on your model, it's going to drop that tooth. So I'll go ahead and just get this tooth lined up now. Um, it's kind of helpful to look at this again from multiple different angles and, and uh, vantage points to make sure that you're, you're putting your crown exactly where you want it to be. With all things 3D, it's, it's very important that you look at uh, your, what, your work basically from multiple different angles to make sure that things don't look perfect from one side, but then if you look at it from a different vantage point, it's all cattywampus. So I'm going to try to line this tooth up as well as I possibly can. In the actual crown and bridge model, if you look up here on the top right side, just like we were speaking about previously, it shows me that I'm in the model editing module. When I get into the crown and bridge module, I'll be able to right click on this in this lower model and make it transparent. Right now, it's not letting me do that because I'm in the model editing module. And I hope at some point they, they make this consistent across all the modules. But in order to make this a little bit more transparent so I can see what I'm doing, I have to click on the model that I'm using and then use this little transparency slider. And you can see that the model starts to disappear as I use that. So I'm going to take it about halfway. And then as this, as I'm finishing the positioning of this tooth here within the, uh, the lower jaw, lower arch, I can look at it from a couple different vantage points and size it to something that I think will work well. I have more, uh, I'll be able to edit this or, or change it later down the road um, during my design, but I'd like to get it as, as close as I possibly can at this stage because it'll save me some work down the road. So now that I've dro dropped that tooth in place, I think it, it'll work fairly well for what I'm trying to design. I'm now going to go actually into the crown and bridge module. Again, I've been in the moditing, uh, model editing module uh, up to this point. So I'll go ahead and use the wizard or the crown and bridge wizard and, and go ahead and get into the crown and bridge module. Over here on this right side, it's going to ask me what type of crown I'm doing. Again, you can do a, a crown on a tie base if you had an implant that you were restoring, or if you're just going to do a conventional crown, we're going to click conventional crown. I'll tell the, uh, the software what uh, jaw that I'm working on, so lower, and which model I'm going to be using to build this crown. I'm going to go ahead and select the tooth that I dropped in there, and then the antagonist that I'm going to use as well, the upper, the upper arch. I'll go ahead and start plan a new restoration. And at this point in the planning, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, make this tooth that we had positioned in there invisible so I can go ahead and continue the rest of this crown design. The first thing that you're going to do is draw the margin. So again, zoom in and out. And this is where you'll use that shift key to go ahead and start to trace your margin. Obviously, this is a trimmed die, so it's, uh, it's a little bit of cheating if you were uh, versus if you were just using a, an inch roll scan without a model that had been scanned back into the computer. So as I hold the shift button, I'm able to just trace along the margin here. I let go and it allows me to pivot the model. I'll hold back down and shift again and draw my margin some more. And I don't like to use too big spaces in between the nodes because uh, it'll sometimes make that margin a little bit less accurate than I want. At the very last node, you'll, you'll click on it, hold shift, and then drag that up to the very first one that you started, and that will complete your margin drawing. So down here, I maybe could have brought that margin down just a little bit. So if you actually just click on where you want that margin to go, um, you just hold shift and then uh, you don't even have to grab just on that uh, line. You can just hold and click and it'll it'll move. You just hold shift and click and it'll move. I'm going to undo that because I, I liked it where it was before. And again, I think that'll work okay for our, our purposes here now. So we'll move forward to the next step. And what it's going to ask you for is an insertion angle for this crown. What you're looking for here is you want it obviously to be able to fit um, within, in between the adjacent teeth, and then try to minimize the undercuts that you have. So um, you wouldn't want to select this type of an insertion angle for this crown because it would be um, cutting off your contacts and you kind of have a funky looking crown. So 
Again, I try to get it so that both contacts are open as much as possible and then minimize any undercuts on the, on the crown prep. And then over here on the right, I can set, uh, insert, set insert direction from view. It changes that arrow and now I'm ready to move wall. The next step that it's going to ask me for is to tell the, the software where are my contacts going to be. So that's a little bit that the marker there is a little bit big for what I have on this too. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust that and just do a couple clicks right here. So that's going to protect my um, interproximal contacts and make sure that the adjustments that are, are, are necessary, um, the necessary adjustments are made for when I finalize my crown, I'll, I'll make sure that I get real good contacts uh, interproximally. So go ahead, uh, go ahead and mark those and then move forward to the next step. And this is going to ask me about my crown um, spacing, essentially. The cement spacer that I want to use or um, how the cement gap that I want to use at um, the bottom of the crown. So if you look here, right now it's saying that I have a one millimeter cement gap, uh, no cement gap. So that would be a real close, intimate fit with the crown on uh, my tooth. Now, if I was milling a crown, that would be great. But say, for example, you want to print something and, and, and the patient broke a temporary crown or whatever it may be, and you want to print something real quick to get them uh, covered up and taken care of, I'm going to move that no cement gap down to 0.1. Again, I'm, I'm looking at a situation where I'd be printing this crown. And if that's the case, then I would want to move it up, move my cement uh, spacer to at least uh, 0.15. Um, give yourself a little bit more room. Um, due to the inaccuracies that can exist with printing versus milling. Again, with a milling unit, you're going to get a, a more accurate fit. Um, so with printing, we're going to just uh, change these settings slightly here. If you were milling your crown, you wouldn't need to change anything. and You, you could just go on to the next step. So even though I've already placed the general position of this tooth, it's asking me if I want to make any modifications. I might just rotate it slightly here. But generally, I like where that uh, has been placed. My marginal lines have lined up pretty well, and the general tooth size uh, will work for what we have. If I wanted to make changes, I could uh, at this point, but I'll get the ability to make those changes here in the final um, portion of this, of this module. And this is really where I'll be able to dial in my occlusion and make sure that my contacts, interproximal contacts, are where I want them. Um, Say, for example, I wanted to try to reduce the occlusion that we have going on right here. So this red marker indicates that there's an interference with the, the tooth or the model above it. You can look through here and see that, yep, okay, that part of the, the crown is extending and you're going to get hyper occlusion right there. So I want to go and adjust that. So I'll click on this add and remove tool here. And uh, like most functions, I'll be using shift and actually to remove um, portions of the crown, I will hold control. And you can see that it kind of highlights, if I turn off this surface here, it'll kind of highlight uh, a big portion of this crown in blue. That's the portion that it's going to be adjusting as I make my changes. So I can actually change the tool strength and the tool size by clicking over here on this right panel. I can also do that by holding my shift key and then zooming in and out with my scroll bar, and that will increase or decrease the size of my tool. Same thing for the strength. I can hold control and zoom in and out. You don't really see that indicated quite as much other than just on the right, right hand panel. Um, you can see that my strength goes up and down, up and down as I scroll up and down. So for this uh, tool, I'm going to try to just smooth out that contact right there so it's not quite as heavy. I'm just holding remove. Usually I like to use a smooth tool um, and I'll just hold shift for that. And you can see it's a little bit more gentle uh, removing of the contacts that we have there. Sometimes the smooth tool add material back, so you just have to be careful and, and know what you're trying to accomplish with, uh, with your tooth. So I'm just gonna smooth a couple things here. I can increase my strength if I want to again. Just smooth things out and then again my contacts. Right here on the right side, you can cut intersections. So the, the system knows or the software knows that um, when it's making a crown, again, this is where I painted that uh, little brown marker on the adjacent teeth. It'll know not to overcorrect and, and totally wipe out my contacts here, um, but I can go and try to smooth these down just a little bit to make it a little bit easier on the, on the software. Um, 
for the final rendition of the crown. The one other tool that I could have used, and I'll just show it here, is the local deform tool. I like this one because it, it, it's kind of a shape preserving tool. Again, I can uh, hold shift and, and zoom in and out, scroll up and down with my um, scrolling wheel, and it'll change the size of that tool. Um, but if I want to just click on something and, and either drag it out or drag it back, uh, this is the tool to be able to use. So I went a little too heavy there, so I'm going to go and, and one other really important tool that you can, uh, or key function that you can use is just Control-Z. It'll undo whatever you've done. So I'm going to go back and just modify this a little bit. Make it so there's not quite as heavy of a contour there. And then I'm actually going to raise the occlusal portion up just a little bit so I can see just a touch of red indicating that I'm getting a little bit of occlusion. Went a little bit too heavy there, so I'll control Z. And I think I like that. I think that'll work well. And my cut and uh, occlusal inter intersections will clean that up so that the, the occlusion is dialed in just right. I can turn these off if I wanted to, if I knew um, exactly what uh, what I was doing as far as changing my um, occlusal contacts, but usually I like to keep that on. and. Um, It'll, it'll bring a good result. So at that point, we're done designing our crown. I mean, that took a couple minutes. I was taking some time to do this. Usually, you can, you can uh, design one of these in about five minutes. Um, it goes really, really quickly. And I'll just finish the, the crown there, and then it gives me the option to export. So I'll go ahead and click that and show what to do next. It pulls up this export window. tells me how many credits I have remaining. And one thing that's important to keep in mind, when you're exporting... Um, different files from Blue Sky Plan, depending on what module you're in, it's gonna charge you certain credits for um, the exports. If you're in the model editing uh, module, you're not gonna get charged anything for exporting like uh, an STL or, or if you made any changes or line mo uh, models, it's not gonna charge you uh, an export for that. In the Crown and Bridge module currently, at the date of this um, webinar, you're not getting charged for the Crown and Bridge exports either. Um, where you will get charged is in the denture module. It's half a credit per arch uh, for denture design. And then if you're creating a surgical guide, it's one credit per uh, per case. So you can have as many cases or many exports as you want from that case, and it's only going to charge you one uh, credit for the surgical guide. So going back to the crown bridge, we'll go ahead and export this. I don't want to export this model in addition to the crown, so I'll go ahead and turn that off. Um, and it gives me the option to export CAM right here. Um, so what this is, is it relates to our milling software. If I'm using a, a mill, uh, for example, a Versa mill or something of that, of that kind, um, I could export the data that's gonna help me or help the, the mill know exactly what parts of the crown are what, and it'll, it'll make that milling process faster so I don't have to go in and define that. So if you are using a mill, uh, like a Versa mill or a Roland mill or whatever it may be, and you have a nesting software, this is where you would um, export that uh, construction information to help with the scan. We're not going to be doing that, so I can turn that off and I can just click on this export and then go ahead and click down here because we're going to go ahead and just uh, print this crown. Let's go up to the, uh, the file that I want to save that, that export to. Go ahead and say yes. Click export and then we'll go ahead and pull this up and show that here's my, my crown right here. Um, I have my crown that was designed right now, and I can go ahead and if I wanted to, say for example, bring up Rayware or um, you know, Vision Tech, bring software, go ahead and take this and import it to um, the printing software. So go up to my webinar files, go ahead and click that crown, import it, and here we are. It's saying that there's some integrity issues with it. I'm going to flip this around and then put some supports on it. Still says that there's some sort of issue with it, so I'm gonna go ahead and just let that fix whatever issue it's, it senses. Now it's saying that I don't have a base, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that crown around again, generate supports, and now we're ready to print it. So that's how you do a crown, and we'll go through a bridge next.
So uh, pretty straightforward process. Um, probably my favorite tool is the local deform tool. Um, I am getting a few questions here and I tried to answer and it stopped my video. So I'm gonna just wait till the very end to do that. So we'll get into the crown uh, or the bridge module next. Really it's the same, you're kind of doing the same thing. You're basically creating two crowns and then you're putting a Pontic in that you're connecting to. So uh, the process is the same. I might skip forward just a little bit because we're um, running a little long um, with these videos, but um, again, repetition is just really helpful as you're picking up these skills to utilize the either blue sky plan or whatever it is within digital dentistry. It just takes time to practice and you're gonna screw it up a few times just like my computer froze and, and crashed. Uh, computers are great until they're not, but um, it just takes time and practice and, uh, you know, usually you get a comfort level and, and a familiarity with it that allows for, uh, for, um, a more honed process. So, okay. So the next thing that we're going to do here on Blue Sky Plan is, and I'm just going to crown. So we'll click on, click on, I just saw this process here. So I'm going to jump forward just a little bit. Quadrant. And I can look uh, at it from again, your multiple different angles to verify that I like that uh, orientation or setting. And I'll go ahead and continue it I like into my model. So now I don't want to put it there, but, um, and I repeated the same. Okay, so for the last. All right, so I'm gonna jump ahead just a little bit here. tooth wax up here and uh, I'm going to be selecting tooth number 28, 29, and 30 here. So it's important to make sure that you select the Pontic in this stage of the of, of this the case setup because this is what's going to be used as your Pontic um, down the road. Really the way the software works is that you create a crown on tooth number 28, you create a crown on tooth number 30, and then it'll merge the Pontic that you bring in at the same time. So it is important to make sure that you select all these teeth. So go ahead and select all three. Uh, the dark red tooth is the one that I'm going to be initially placing um, after I select here. Let's go ahead and say, okay. And then again, to the, since, since that uh, tooth number 28 was the one that was and dark red, that's what the crosshairs are gonna be placing whenever I drop the T. So go ahead, see right there. Still isn't super accurate, and I'm gonna to have to pull all three of these into alignment. Um, I believe there's a way that you can you can uh, expedite that and, and have a tooth chain so it pulls all three down at once, but um, it didn't do it that time, so. So we get kind of a rough alignment initially with these teeth, get them where we want to be. And then again, it is helpful to dial this in as much as you possibly can at this stage. These, uh, these little balls uh, or spheres here will change the size of the tooth. And that's one thing that if you try to position this tooth later on in the crown and bridge module, it, you don't have that option. So I like to, there's another reason why I like to position the tooth here at this stage. Um, I'm going to turn the transparency on here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that model that I want to change and then just be able to look inside so I can adjust the size of this tooth. I think I'm going to have to probably adjust the size of that tooth as well. Bring it down just a little bit, a little bit too big. And one other thing that I like to do is look from the intaglio of the model and I can see how much intersection there is with the model and the tooth. One thing that's uh, important to note is that the way that the, the Blue Sky Plan is going to create the connections in between the teeth, there are two different options. One, you can just have the teeth intersect. So you could have a significant portion of the teeth touching uh, between the Pontic and the retainers, and it will go ahead and just make that um, the connection that you want. I think that's a good option. Um, it's more aesthetic, but what you don't get from that is you can't tell uh, what the, the area of your connector is. Um, there are studies that show that uh, 12 millimeters uh, squared area is the most, is, is an important size to prevent fracturing at that connection uh, portion. So um, I might just make these teeth a little bit smaller just so they're just not touching so I can create a 
uh, connector at the very last stage. So even if there's just a sliver of room there, it'll allow me to create connectors and, and measure the size of that connector to make sure that it's going to be uh, big enough to prevent fracturing. And again, these the two sizes here um, are not perfect. You can choose a bunch of different selections from that tooth library um, on whatever you would like. You want to line these kind of these cusps up, and then you can spend a long time on this if you want to, or you can get it in and, and kind of make it work. I'm not going to spend too much more time here just because I want to move on to the next step of uh, this fabrication process. Again, I am going to just make sure that there's just the slightest bit of separation in between these teeth. Just a little bit of daylight there, so that should work. Okay, so uh, at this point, again, we're not even in the Crown and Bridge module. We're still in the model editing module, but we can go to our Crown and Bridge design. It's going to ask us now which teeth we want to design. So. I'm going to go ahead and say I want to create a conventional crown on the mandible. Um, the model is that green model in the lower. And the first one I'm going to do is the first premolar. So I'll go ahead and click that. And then the antagonist I'll put as the upper arch and I'll start. So it's asking me if I want to create a new one. Uh, yes, I do. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the teeth. And it's helpful if you kind of get a routine um, every single time you, you design these crowns. So make sure you do the same thing every single time. And now we'll go ahead and hold that select button down, start to draw my margin. And at various times within the software, there were like auto draw margin, uh, auto draw functions in this. I actually prefer this type of a, a margin draw. I feel like it's the most accurate. And I've used a number of different CAD programs, dental CAD programs, and I still prefer to draw it out this way. It takes a little bit longer, um, but if you don't have a trimmed die, um, you can be a lot more accurate with how you draw your margin. Next, it's going to ask me for that insertion angle, and we'll visit this later on down the road when we're building the bridge. So um, generally just want to make sure I can get the contact there. It's going to ask me for the contact area. So go ahead and just click there. It's going to ask for the crown bottoms next, and on this one, I'm just going to keep it where it is. Uh, we'll just pretend that we're going to mill this crown. And then it's going to say, all right, this is where your crown is. It looks like it kind of changed based on where I had initially placed that tooth, so we'll go ahead and just try to line that up. Not sure why it did that. Um, right here, I can right click and then toggle that. Uh, translucency okay yeah I'm not gonna spend too much time here but just generally gonna gonna place these where they need to go go to the next step here And then I'll be able to add or subtract whatever else I need to from this tooth. So again, I'm going to click uh, select to add to um, that red portion right here. It's a little bit different than this dark red that you can see. That's where it's violating the minimal thickness of the crown. So I, I really don't want any of those areas to be in pink because that potentially could create a breaking point for my crown. This looks a little bit crazy over here. So I'm going to go to this local deform tool hold and just kind of bring that lingual contour of that crown in. And again, I'll let you guys play with that. I'm, this isn't going to be the prettiest crown in the world, but I just want to make sure that we're um, hitting the high points on what we need here. To remove, I'm going to hit uh, control hold control and then just I do I like to do clicks instead of just holding down on my left um, left mouse uh, function um, I, I like to do just little clicks here and there 
um, I find I control I can control the tool a little bit better. So if you look, if we zoom in here, you can see a little divot um, where I had taken away a little bit too much material. So I'm going to go ahead and hold Shift and just try to smooth that out. And you can see it's it's changing quite a bit of the uh, anatomy of that tooth, but um, I think that looks a little bit better anyway. So okay, so at this point again, I can cut the uh, intersections. We'll go ahead and just finish that that uh, that crown. And like I said, we're going to create a crown here and then a crown here, and then we're going to combine all those together um, later on down the road. So next I'm going to go create another conventional crown on the mandible, lower arch. Use it For this crown this time, I'm going to use the first molar. I'm going to have an antagonist, and we'll go ahead and start that. And now I'm going to tell the, the software which crown I'm working on. So we'll go ahead and draw this margin, pull down the shift button. And in that last uh, node, you just connect it, hold shift, and then connect into the other one, uh, the very first node that you, you selected. And you can see here, I messed up on that margin, so I'm just going to hold shift, click where I want that margin to go, and it'll kind of bring those things into place. It's still not working. You can click shift and hold, or you can hold shift and then just kind of draw where you want that margin to end up, and it will... Um, correct that line. Okay, so I have my margin selected. I'm going to try to minimize my undercuts here again. And again, it'll figure this out uh, later on down the road for the bridge as we connect these all these pieces together. I'm going to select the interproximal contact. Create the crown bottoms. Again, we're just going to leave it where it is because we're pretending we're going to mill this bridge. It allows me to reposition anything that I would like. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this just a little bit. And admittedly, this tooth is a little bit big for this model. Um, but like I said, just demonstration purposes, you can, you can dial that in and, and uh, make whatever fine adjustments you want to on your cases. That's going to work okay for our purposes here. So we'll go ahead and move forward. And it will allow me to make any adjustments to the occlusion that we need to. So this one's a little bit heavier. Um, I'll use this local deform tool. And just try to clean these up. One other option is you can turn on the opposing model and go in and adjust these oh, it's going the wrong direction there from the other side of the through the intaglio of the other model and that way um, you can kind of get that dialed in a little bit more accurately or a little bit more quickly so I'm again I'm just holding control and then removing the material that I want to And that looks like it'll work out okay. So let's go ahead and turn that off, smooth out whatever areas I need to with my smooth tool. Taking away a little bit of the anatomy on the tooth, and that looks a little extreme there. So we'll go ahead and clean that contact up. Look at the, uh, the uh, intaglio of the model. Just smooth that up just a little bit. And again, since I'm cutting approximate intersections, that should take care of that later on down the road. So I like where that, that is generally. And we'll go ahead and create that crown. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is bring in our last tooth here. And we go up to the model editing phase. And we'll just create a little bit of daylight in between these teeth. And 
adjust this down just a little bit right there. And we'll tell it to create bridge. So now um, we have these two little connectors in between. You can see that little blue portion and that uh, as, as my mouse connects to it, it's, it turns yellow. Those are what will become our uh, our connectors. So we'll go ahead and click forward here. And you can see right now the the total area of that connector is pretty small. So we want to make some changes here. And the way we can do that is by holding, if I hold, click on this node that's on the tooth and hold shift, I can dramatically increase the size of that connection. So I'm going to increase that on, on both of the teeth. And then here, if I click and hold shift on the central portion of the nodes on the connector, I can move it up and down, depending, place that in a different area that maybe I would want to on the, on the tooth. If I want to increase the area that it's contacting, if I hold control and pull that, uh, that node, it'll increase the size of the connection. So we'll go ahead and just try to expand this again, trying to get to that 12 millimeters minimum. Between these teeth. So we go there. This one's really small, so we're going to make some big changes over here on the side. Hold that shift button down again. Increase the area that I have available to me, I'm going to hold control and then scroll out until I get more connection area. If you're using zirconia in the green state, you can go back and, and uh, make some improvements in the and the way that looks, um, because admittedly that's not the most aesthetic thing. Um, if you're in, if you're printing something like this, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend printing um, with a bridge at this point, uh, you could go back and make some changes with burr after it's been printed. So we'll go ahead and move to the next step. The alternative is that you can increase your interferences or intersections with the crowns when you fabricate them, and it's going to look a lot more aesthetic. One other thing that you uh, what we'll want to do at this stage is to make sure you remove this material in the in the underside of the bridge where your pontic will be touching on the gingiva. So you can go ahead and, and take away some area there, um, sculpt that however you would like. And then the last portion is you once define your path of insertion. So I'll zoom out a little bit here, set insert from, from view, and go ahead and fabricate this bridge. So again, the connectors aren't the most aesthetic. I would go back in and, and with a burr, probably redefine those a little bit better in the green state before I. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and we'll finish that video. It basically, you just go through the same steps as you did to export. And if you want the cam information, you just make sure that that's highlighted. It'll send uh, that file to wherever you want it. Um, and then when you when you import it into your nesting software for your mill, if that's what you're doing, then you can go ahead and, and mill it at that point. Um, just like I touched on here in the video again, these connectors are a little bit ugly as far as uh, you know. I wouldn't necessarily want that in my mouth in the in the current um, state that it is. But you can increase those uh, the intersection of the teeth so you can get a more aesthetic appearance and something that will uh, be strong. You just have to make sure that you get a healthy enough interference or uh, intersection between those, the Pontic and the retainers 
to make sure that uh, you get that aesthetic option. Um, I could have moved uh, right when I when I first had that connector, I could have moved that down just a little bit more and it would have filled in more of that gingival um, embrasure versus having it being towards the occlusal embrasure and then it would have maintained that space just a little bit better. Um, and one thing that, it, that I, I would do differently in this case. Um, but again, export just the same as you would otherwise and then uh, with the crown and then um, you can fabricate your restoration. So we're about out of time um, and there are a couple questions that I wanna get to, but um, I just wanna show a quick case that I had done with CAD CAM. Um, this is a patient that I had had uh, during my residency and she had had a history of cancer and just some things that had really affected her teeth. Um, we were able to utilize a wax up that we did digitally, printed that, mocked it up in her mouth, um, prepped, and we're able to fabricate restorations for her um, in-house. And this, this, I mean, it took a little bit of time. I didn't do same day restorations on these, but they are monolithic zirconia. And I think they have a pretty good aesthetic look, especially where there was so much staining um, on, her, on her original teeth. We're able to make these in-house. And I think the total cost for the restorations, uh, the zirconia that we milled was somewhere in the neighborhood of like $250. Um, so you consider something like this, I was able to provide this at a service to her at a much reduced cost than she otherwise would have been able to get. So, um, and that's kind of the final final photo of her of her smile there, a uh, case that was really fun to be a part of. So these are just some of the other options that as you go through digital dentistry that you, you have the ability to be able to fabricate and design. Not all these can be done in Blue Sky Plan, but there there is uh, definitely the denture module that you can utilize and then um, crown, uh, implant crowns as well that we didn't touch on today. So it's a really powerful software and, and one that um, I've really enjoyed learning over the years. Um, and uh, this is my contact information. Um, transcendde.com is our education site and then transcend digital lab is our lab site so if you have any questions or, or um, would like any of our services or work with us we'd be happy to uh, to engage in that way so um, there are a couple questions here that uh, I'm trying to think the best way to answer these um, I, I was typing and it was pausing my video so uh, I'll just I'll just kind of respond to these as I see them here the first one is, would each implant brand and size need different configuration and setting, um, which you will make available? So Michael, you can probably talk about this, but there are uh, a vast number of implant libraries that are already in Blue Sky Plan. And one thing to consider as well is, um, I'm a big fan of the Blue Sky fully guided uh, keyless kit, the surgical kit. Um, and your body doesn't know if you drill a hole that is with a Blue Sky kit, or if it's a BioHorizons kit, or if it's with another implant kit. All that really matters is you create a hole, and I would recommend potentially undersizing the osteotomy depending on the density of the bone, but um, you can place any implant as long as you create a hole that's big enough for that implant to fit. So um, I don't know the review process that you guys go through, Michael, but that uh, it's it's really easy to be able to use that Blue Sky Fully Guided Kit, and that's uh, primarily what we make our guides to fit here at the Transcend Digital Lab as well. So. Yeah, we definitely recommend the use of the Blue Sky Bio implants and the Blue Sky Bio Fully Guided Kit. That being said, we have around 70 different implant systems in the software. Uh, some of them are just the implants. Most of them are implants with the guided surgical kits, and a good number of them are with the prosthetic restorations as well. If you see that information is missing or a particular implant system is missing or the abutments are missing, then speak to that company, ask them to reach out to us. We'll take it from there and we could get the system and the parts directly into the Blue Sky Plan software. And once it's in the software and all the settings and everything connected to that are programmed into the software as well. That's, um, that's just one thing that I, I find really convenient. Um, I've placed a number of different implants, different systems, different kits again. Um, I, like, I really like the Biomax implant and I like the, the single connection, um, but the, the, the surgical kit itself, the burrs, are really easy to use. And I really like that, especially when you look at it. So that's just my personal preference. Um, there are a lot of other keyless kits out there that you can use, but uh, I, I am a big fan of the, the, the Blue Sky Bio Kit. Um, some of the other questions, uh, is this gonna be available as a recording? I believe so. Uh, Michael, you can, uh, we went over that information at the very beginning. Um, a question here, can you scan the original tooth or the, you know, before you prep the tooth, can you scan the original tooth and then have Blue Sky copy it? Michael, you may know uh, on this one, I. Do not believe that is a function of Blue Sky Plan currently. You can scan and import that uh, 
that model into Blue Sky Plane and then try to create a tooth that approximates that original tooth. But I don't know how to make it copy something that you've scanned previously. Michael, is that is that a function that's available now? Do you know? Yeah, currently we do not have that functionality. But let me tell you, we have a very aggressive uh, development pipeline. There's going to be fantastic functionality being added to the software over the next uh, few months and uh, a longer time frame as well. So you're going to have ways of doing that in, in the not too distant future in the Blue Sky Plan software. And there's one other question there, it looks like, um, that we haven't answered yet is, how do you reduce the transparency of the model? I think I, I touched on that within uh, the video there, but there are two different ways. If you're in the crown and bridge module, you can right click on the model and it'll allow you to change the transparency of, of, of the model. If you're initially dragging those teeth and placing them and you're in the model editing so, uh, module, then you have to go and, and click on the model that you wanna change and then down below, sorry, it's in the surfaces tab or panel. You click on the model that you wanna change and then down below there's a little slider that you can use. I don't normally go about halfway to create a transparency that I can see through, but still be able to uh, know that, you know, where the, the adjacent teeth are that I'm working with um, also. So um, it looks like there are a couple other questions that were put on um, chat here and just look through, does Blue Sky Bio have tools to edit the models to prefabricate shell temporaries? Yeah, so they're, um, they're <laughs> You can get into shell temporaries. Corey Glenn, one of my one of my partners here at Transcend, he has a number of different videos um, online, and I think that he's posted with with Blue Sky uh, significantly as well. That you can go and and he has some really good um, videos for that. I think he uses Mesh Mixer in those videos, as I don't know if you can just do the shell temps in Blue Sky Plan alone. Um, and so, but he he goes through a real thorough video there that. Uh, kind of shows the whole A to Z on how to uh, do that process. Um, which cements do you recommend related with different crown materials? That's a great question. Um, I, uh, I like a, so the, the cement that I'm currently using is Panavia SA Universal. And the reason I like that is it bonds to pretty much everything and you don't have to use a separate primer. It has that included. Um, there are a lot of different universal uh, cements out there that you can find. Um, I think Reliax has one. I mean, pretty much every major brand is gonna have its own um, self-adhesive or, or self-priming um, sort of uh, uh, cement. There's a couple materials in there. If you have um, MDP and then uh, long chain polymer, polymers, essentially, it, 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 uh, it, it creates a real good bond um, and it does a good job. So. Um, Last question. It's easy if you use mesh mixer. Let me know if you like. Yeah. So, okay. Somebody's responding back. And then, um, yeah. So, yeah, you can do it in mesh mixer. Uh, and again, Corey has some videos on that as well. So, um, are there any other questions that we have here tonight? I appreciate you guys uh, sticking around and being a part of this tonight. Yeah. There's a tremendous amount of free educational information via Transcend and via Blue Sky Plan. I think Transcend is a weekly live. Uh, tutorial sessions That's right. via their Facebook channel. Uh, what do you, is there a particular date and time of that? The yeah, primarily it's uh, 12, uh, 12 o'clock Central Time. Um, and Corey usually will hit those videos on Wednesday afternoon. Uh, since I was doing this tonight, we, we skipped that today, but normally that's part of it. We have a Facebook group as well. If you want to go in and, and join our Facebook group, it's Transcend Digital, uh, uh, Transcend Dental Education. And it's a group and uh, we'd love for you guys to have feedback or, or um, you know, one of the things that we are really interested in is just learning more about what people want to learn as well. So, uh, you know, when we have webinars like this on Blue Sky Bio and, and other things, uh, we like to just, we have a lot of, of technology here that we like to utilize. And um, it's just sometimes hard to know what everybody wants to, to learn about or, or things that they're interested in. So feel free to reach out and let us know things that you'd be, uh, you'd be interested in learning in the future. Corey is kind of a mad scientist and has something going on pretty much every day of the week. So um, he's always coming up with something new that we that we have um, that we usually post to our Facebook page and, and our group. And where could people find out more information regarding the live courses that you guys are running? Yeah, so we're, we're still in the uh, initial phases of getting that all set up and, and, and ready to roll. As soon as that is uh, live, we were going to post very heavily 
um, all over Facebook and, and social media and on our website. We know that that's something that uh, is going to be a huge uh, benefit to the 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 doctors and in, in, you know around here and, and with this country, and also for the patients in this area. So um, we're working towards that and anticipate that that should be done. Our our building is currently under construction. Our construction is taking a little bit longer than we anticipated. So that's some of the delays that we've seen, but. Um, we're hoping to have that all wrapped up and 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 rolling here in June. So, okay, very good. Well, Brian, thank you so much for the presentation, for taking the time, putting it together, and of course presenting it. We uh, really appreciate that. Yeah, thanks for having me. Had a good time. Appreciate it. And I'd like to thank everybody who attended. Again, check out blueskyplan.com forward slash webinars 2022 for the upcoming schedule and for past uh, recorded presentations. This recording should be available on our YouTube channel and on our website in the next day or two. So check that out. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at upcoming webinar presentations. Thank you. Have a good night. Take care.